Hey guys, uh, good afternoon. We are back. Uh, I'm Ish and my co-host Girish is here. We have our next uh, uh, presenter with us. I'm not going to spoil the fun and I would let Girish do the introduction. Girish, go on. Yeah. So our next uh, speaker is Nathan Mongo. He's actually he's still a high school student, but he's really good into IT. He's a member of CyberStorm.mu. Um, and he's a maker. I would love if uh, maybe Nathan, can you tell us a bit about yourself and uh, how did you get into IT? What made you interested? Well, first of all, I actually planned on doing electronic engineering, but then uh, what happened was I actually decided to do IT because it'd actually be much more simpler. But um, as a hobby, I do uh, electronics and I make stuff. And one of them is like uh, making circuit boards and uh, building circuits. Okay. So yeah, uh, I think you are you are a regular you are a regular speaker at DevCon. So can you tell us a bit about what uh, or what is your talk going to be about today? Create your first circuit. Create your first printed circuit board using KiCad. A, a little brief maybe, and then we can start. Okay, so uh, KiCad is like an open source EDA tool, and um, pretty much anyone can use it. And I'll actually show you how to make your first circuit board uh, using KiCad. Okay, so I guess it's all yours, uh, Nathan. Come on, go on. Okay, so I'm um, going to be showing you guys how to create your first uh, printed circuit board in KiCad. So in this session, we'll be covering uh, what KiCad is, what it can do, and We'll create our first circuit board. So, um, like, what is KiCad? So, KiCad is a free and open source electronic design automation suite. And uh, what you can do is you can uh, create schematics, print circuit boards. You can uh, view your print circuit board designs in 3D. You can generate Gerber files, uh, the files you need to actually give your print a circuit board manufacturer in order to uh, make your PCB. So if you're not an engineer or a technical person, no worries, anybody can use KiCad. Now let's create our first circuit board. So let me just exit the slides. Okay, so first of all, uh, you're gonna have to download KiCad. Now just go to KiCad-PCB.org. Um, KiCad is available for Windows, Linux, uh, Mac OS, and I think FreeBSD too, but uh, yeah. So I'll be uh, doing this on Windows. So I've already installed KiCad. So let me just open up KiCad here. Okay, so uh, when you download KiCad, the first thing you'll see uh, is this screen here. Oh, hold on, I think I accidentally closed this. Okay, so the first thing, uh, you'll see is uh, this. So what, you, what you're gonna have to do first is actually create your project. So there's this uh, icon here. You just have to click on it and hold on. Okay, so right, you can uh, save it any way you want. For this one, we're gonna be calling it uh, DevCon, uh, DevCon Demo. Right, so once you create your project, you're going to be presented with the uh, PCB and uh, schematic file. So what you have to do first is create the schematic. Okay, so we go up here. Okay, so um, the circuit we'll be making today is not a very complicated one. It's just going to be an LED and a resistor. You can create more complicated schematics, but if, if you've never uh, done this before, then uh, an LED and a resistor uh, should do the trick. Okay, so here's some libraries. So um, KiCad's not going to give you this because uh, that's because I kind of messed up some libraries here and there. But if you just install KiCad, it's, that's not going to happen. So yeah, so let's just put LED. So um, another good thing about KiCad is that you have all these uh, libraries here. A, if you um, ever use an EDA suite, you're going to have to uh, need libraries. And these libraries allow you to like uh, add components to your schematic and print a circuit board. 
And because KiCad's open source, you get all kinds of uh, libraries out there. And KiCad does have uh, quite, a quite a lot of uh, libraries built into it. Okay, so let's just place our LED here. And we'll need a resistor. So in KiCad, if you just type in resistor, you won't exactly get uh, resistor exactly. So if you just want a simple resistor, you'll get R. You just uh, type in R and okay. Right, so uh, we have our components here. And uh, if you want to connect them, there's this uh, tool here called Place Wire. You get uh, different kinds, but we're just going to be using the simple uh, place wire. And uh, just click here, click here. There you go. Right. So we need we need to like uh, connect these to power. So in your schematic, just uh, go over here, the uh, power port symbol. And let's say we're going to be running this off five volts. So let's just type in five volts, plus five volts, and there you go. So in order to rotate uh, your components, just uh, press the R key and you'll be able to rotate your components. So I'm just going to rotate it here, connect it directly. So we've already connected the anode part to 5 volts. Now uh, the cathode part needs to go to uh, ground. So let's just get ground. That will be GND over here. Okay. It's connected here and done. So uh, another thing you're going to have to do with your schematic is also uh, like indicate which components are which. So you can easily do that. There's double clicking on it. One. So if you want to do uh, more things with it, you just have to uh, right click and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So yeah. Okay, so now we've uh, created our schematic here. If you want to add things like the revision number and all that stuff, the at the uh, bottom of the page, at the bottom right, you have this, uh, this table here. So uh, for title, in order to create text in the schematic, you're just going to have to uh, Click this uh, thing here, place text. So let's call it uh, DevCon demo. Now, uh, for the text, you can, um, you know, you can like uh, customize the size, and you can either have it in normal, italic, bold, or bold and italic. So I'm just gonna go with normal. Here. So I'm just going to place DevCon demo here. Now we have revision here. Now what revision is, is that um, let's say you create your first circuit, it'll be revision one. If you create your uh, second circuit, that'll be either revision 1.1 or 1.2 or uh, revision two. It's totally up to you. If you don't use um, numbers, you can use alphabets like revision A, revision B, revision C. It's uh, totally up to you what you uh, what you want to use for the revision, but I'm just going to use uh, revision one. Just use a number instead. Okay. So over here you can add graphics and stuff, but we're not going to do that. So yeah. So after you've uh, done this, what you're going to have to do is create a net. So just generate a net list. And what it's going to do is it's going to gen generate a netlist in your uh, KiCad folder, uh, dev on demo, and just click save. And yeah, now let's actually move on to uh, creating your uh, circuit board. So, right, just wait for this to open. Okay, it's going to it's going to be a while. Okay. So uh, when you create your first uh, circuit board, it's just going to be blank here. Blank here. And um, what you're going to have to do first is create the board outline. That uh, can depend. If you already have a size in mind, let's say maybe 10 by 10 millimeters, 
we can create our uh, PCB to be 10 by 10 millimeters. So um, if you want to like create the board outline, um, it'd be a good idea if you can like change the grid size. This over here, you have grid 0 0.2, 0 0.1 and all that. So what that is, um, that kind of like makes, that kind of like uh, uh, just the precision of the uh, pointer here. And as you can see, if I make it smaller, maybe 0 0.01, it's more fluent. So yeah, we're just gonna make it uh, five mil for the grid. And um, in KiCad, um, the layers are uh, slightly uh, different if you use Eagle or uh, Altium, but um, you're just going to have to go into Edge Cuts over here. That's going to be your board outline. Then just click on Add Graphic Lines. Then all you do is create your board outline. So here we created a 10 millimeter board. It's going to be a 10 by 10. Uh, Board. All right. Okay, so we created the board outline here, and now we're gonna have to like place a compass. So um, you can either do that manually, or uh, what you could do is uh, just load the net list, and let's get a net file over here. Okay, so if you get errors like this, just don't worry about it. Just uh, put. Update PCB. Okay, so for some reason that didn't uh, add my components, but if that happens to you, then what you're gonna have to do is uh, manually add the components. Take a while. Uh, okay, just move this. Right. Okay, so now we're just gonna have to look for a resistor that we still got over. Okay, so uh, you get different kinds of footprints here. So if you just type in uh, Okay, so you can have surface mount components or through hole components. So uh, surface mount components, the thing with surface mount components is that it goes on the surface of the board. So let me just uh, put down the 3D viewer to, uh, let me just adjust the grid. Here, let's put about, okay, one more view, right. So let me just put a through hole component to, down so you're gonna have all these uh, libraries here but you're just gonna have to like find the right one for, uh, for your design uh, it's kind of here. Um, ah. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be a bit too big, the components. So I'm just going to have to make my board outline a lot bigger. So I'm just going to have to remove this. Outline. So I will make it 20 by 20. Okay. So at the bottom here, you can actually uh, see that's like showing the length of the uh, the line you're drawing. So yeah. Okay. So now let's go into 3D Viewer. Let me show you the uh, difference between a through-hole component and surface mount component. Okay. Let's make this here. Okay, so as you can see here, the uh, surface mount component 
is going to stay at the uh, top of the board, and the through hole components will actually go through the board. So the advantage of having a surface mount uh, component is that it actually be a lot easier for you to like uh, place. So if let's say you were going to make um, hundreds or even thousands of these boards, it'd actually be more efficient if you use surface mount components. But if you're just a hobbyist, then through hole components would just would just work fine. Unless you want to like uh, practice some surface mount soldering, if you want to get into it, so yeah. Okay, All right, that's much better. All right, so in the three D viewer, you can actually uh, adjust the board color too. Let me just show you that. So you can adjust the solder mask color. The solder mask, that's the uh, layer where you get the uh, color and stuff. So Concat does have some uh, predefined colors. So let's say I want to make this board red. Okay, let's make this red. Okay. So yeah, for the you can also uh, modify the uh, surface finish. Okay, you can change the surface finish to uh, tin or copper or. You can have your own color too if you want to. So yeah, let's change it to ten. Okay, as you can see. Right. So let's get back to the PCB design. Let's, let's minimize this. Okay. So now, um, because our circuit also requires an LED, we'll also uh, place the LED here. So we're going to be using a three millimeter LED here. All right. So if you actually made like a mistake, like I did here, so you can there's this there's this uh, undo button here, and you just click that, and that'll undo what mistake you did, or what change you did. So. So if you right click, you can like uh, modify the component. But if you just want to like edit the component, you can just uh, click, you can just press E. And you can like either have it on the front or back of your board. And you can like either display the, uh, the reference number or not. So yeah. So let's just change this to D1. Okay. Right. So now let's just uh, redo this uh, Nethlist uh, step. It should work. But this time, just uh, tick this thing here. Uh, Reassociate uh, footprint by reference. So just do that. So now, uh, as you can see, you have this thing here that's called a net. So when nets do, um, they show you where uh, the component is supposed to connect. And in this case, this LED here is supposed to connect to this part of the resistor. So let's. So uh, for your board layout, you can also modify the you know, like where you want to put the components. Here. Again, just press R to rotate, and yeah. Okay. All right, let's just place it here. Okay, so now once you've uh, put your components and defined the board outline and for your net list, uh, you're going to have to like put the uh, copper tracks. Now, for this, you're going to have to go into FCU. That's going to be your front copper layer. Then, uh, if you want to modify the track sizes, you can do that. So, by default, you'll have 0.25. Yeah, that's going to be here. Right. So, let's 
so that's cool point twenty five. But if you want thicker tracks, it's that's easy. All you have to do, do is go into edit predefined sizes, click this here, and let's say we want our uh, track to be uh, one millimeter or let's put it 0 0.7. Right. So press OK. Now in the track, you'll get the option for 0.7. Right. So now let's connect this here. And let's say we want to add like a connector or something. Let's just uh, like a pad or something. Okay, so instead of a connector, let's just add a simple pad here. Okay, that's way too big. So again, you have to uh, find the right uh, footprint sizes because some of them might be too big. Some of them might not be exact. If they look the same, that doesn't mean they are the same. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, let's take this one. Okay, this one's okay. So instead of just doing the same process over and over again, you can just copy and paste the component here. Okay. Now uh, we're not going to be putting any reference, but I think you can actually uh, modify that. So if you just double click on the pad here, you can change the netlist to, okay, let's say ground. All right. Okay, let's make this five volts instead. Okay, so now uh, what you could do is you could directly connect it here. All right. All right, so now um, you could just do that, or what you could do, uh, you could have a ground plane. So what a ground plane is, is that instead Instead of directly uh, connecting the board to ground, I mean connection to ground through a uh, copper track, you could have the entire board uh, like with a copper fill that connects it to ground. So let me just show you what that is. So in order to do that, just go into add fill zones. Let's create the. Okay, so it's going to ask you what net you want to connect this to. Let just uh, go with grounds, okay. Okay, so as you can see here, you'll have like some kind of ground. Now all this copper bit here is actually connected to the ground. So the reason uh, why you do this is uh, if you want to like uh, reduce interference in your circuits, or maybe, I don't know, you just want to. So yeah. So if you already put the ground fill here, but you want to see the uh, copper tracks, you can actually uh, just take this, just take here, you'll only see the tracks, or you can uh, have this here. So, okay, let me just make the screen bigger. Right. Okay, so on your left, you'll have all these options here. You'll even have the layer stack up. And I uh, even have this here, which uh, if this wasn't turned on, you just see uh, the cursor here like this. So you just have to turn it on in order to see this uh, like line thing. So, yeah. Right, so now let's just uh, view a board in 3D. Okay, so as you can see, it's just a regular board. Okay, that's good. Right, so uh, if you don't want to have a square board, you want to make different uh, shape size boards, um, you can also do that. So let me just go ahead and generate different uh, kind of board. So, 
Um, yeah, let's just this. So if you want to uh, not see a certain layer, you can just un you can just uh, untick some of these boxes. So let's say if you don't want to see the uh, front copper layer, you just untick this here, and you can like edit the uh, edit components. So now let's make a board uh, round. So just going to add a graphic circle. So don't remember to set this to edge cuts. Okay, and let's create a graphic circle. Maybe this big. That should work. Should be front copper. And this should work. So for the copper fill, uh, we're going to have to redo that because this just looks weird. So let's do it again. It's ground. So with the copper fill, you can actually put it outside of the board because it will automatically detect uh, if it's outside of the board or not. So yeah. Okay, here we go. So let's just pure board in 3D. Let's drag this here. Okay, so as you can see, our board is now in 3D. So, and also, uh, it's round. I mean, you can make other kinds of shapes, but yeah. Okay, now. Um, if you want to improve your schematic and all that, you can also do that. So yeah, and also if you want to generate a building materials, you can uh, also do that. So yeah. Okay, now let's say uh, you want to get this uh, circuit board made. So what you do is uh, you need to export to Gerber files. So let's just create our own Gerber files here. So in order to do that, you just have to go into plot and uh, Okay, so you'll get the uh, layers you need to choose. Just uh, go with these layers, All right? And um, just untick this because uh, most manufacturers, they don't support Gerber X2 because usually if you generate a Gerber file, uh, that'd be Gerber X1. The only difference being Gerber X2 has more uh, details in the file, but some manufacturers, if they use something like CAN350 to uh, view your uh, circuit board design files, then uh, they may not be able to uh, open it. And you also get the Proto uh, file name extension. Um, that's optional. Doesn't matter whether you uh, take it or not, but according to KiCad, it's not exactly recommended, but even if you send like um, like Gerber files with Proto, Proto uh, file name extension, then uh, you should be good. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to take that. So uh, now we're going to like uh, create a folder. New folder. We're going to be calling that Gerber's. Okay. Just click yes. And yeah. So first what you do is you just uh, click on plot. So it's created. So right now it's created the Gerber files. And um, we're not done yet because what it's done is it's only created this uh, outline and the copper bits, but for the whole, that's not uh, created yet. So let's create the drill files. Now we get all this uh, stuff here, but just leave it uh, with, um, if, uh, by default. Just use the defaults and uh, just click on generate drill file. So yeah. Okay, now let's take a look at our Google files. Right. Let's drag the screen here. Just give me a minute. Okay, so we're in our uh, DevCon demo directory. That's where we have all the files and stuff. So now what you're gonna have to do is create a zip file. We call that DevCon demo two.
and all you're gonna have to do is just drag this into it and yeah okay it's And another thing about KiCad is that you don't just get the uh, PC, PCB and schematic uh, designer, you also get a grid reviewer, a bitmap to a uh, component converter, a PCB calculator. So the PCB calculator pretty much what it does is uh, you can calculate uh, what track width you need and all that stuff. Like it's really interesting. I definitely uh, recommend you take a look at this. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be using the Gerber Viewer here. OK, let me just drag it over here. OK. So just click on Open Gerber Files and just go into uh, Gerber's. So just uh, select all of these here. Click on Open. Just ignore this thing here. OK, now you should be able to see your uh, circuit board in Gerber. Uh, in the uh, Gerber format. Now, uh, the Gerber viewer isn't uh, that great, but if you want a better Gerber viewer, then you could check out an online Gerber viewer called uh, tracebase.io. So, so Gerber's here. Okay. Gerber's DevCon demo dot zip. It's taking a while. Okay, for some reason that's not loading. Uh, well, just reload this. Just manually drag it in. See if that does anything. Uh, for some reason it's not opening it. Okay, just ignore that. All right, let's try. Okay, so uh, if you want to get the uh, circuit boards made, uh, all you can do is just like upload these zip files to like a uh, PCB manufacturer. And what they'll do is they'll like uh, take a look at your Gerber files and uh, what they usually do, they'd like uh, place out on a panel. So uh, because they can't, because before when they used to make circuit boards, um, you couldn't just like just get it made like that. You need to buy an entire panel. So what they do now, they just place it onto a panel and they share the uh, manufacturing cost. So if I need like, let's say three of these boards that just cost me like $6 at Osage Park. So yeah. Got a uh, error here, doesn't contain a bottom soap screen. That doesn't matter. So yeah. So you also get different uh, PCB manufacturers. You can get uh, JLC PCB here. But essentially, they just take your Gerber files and uh, make your circuit board. So in total, that could come to about $6 or even $30. It's not that expensive. And you can also like get stencils made with it, too. So yeah. OK. OK, we just talked about a few tips when using the schematic tool. Uh, like when using the schematic tool, don't make any uh, like if you want to uh, make a huge schematic, then that's pretty easy. You're just going to have to edit the page size. It's over here. OK, page settings. So in, by default, it will be like a four. And uh, you can make it bigger. You can make it a three. Just do that here. OK, so as you can see, it's a three now. But we'll just set it back to a four. Okay, great. 
So if you made any changes, just always save it just in case, uh, let's say your PC crashes or something. It, it actually ruined your day if, let's say, you had like a really complicated board design and your PC just crashed all of a sudden. That wouldn't be uh, really great. So, yeah. All right. And another thing is always uh, double check your designs for mistakes and stuff. And uh, always take a look at the footprints because I've had this before. What would happen is some of the footprints, um, like in schematic, did look okay. Did look okay, but then in the uh, actual PCB footprint, it actually be something slightly different. That that might have been in the older versions of KiCad. I think they might have fixed this on uh, the newer versions, but just be aware of that. So yeah, and because um, KiCad does use quite a bit of Python, you can also uh, do some like Python scripting and all that stuff. So yeah. I mean, if you if you're really into Python, then you'll actually like KiCad quite a lot. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I think I've covered the basics. All right. Okay. Um, if you guys have any questions. Just send me an email at nathan at technol.websites or nathan at .new and I'll get back to you in like one or two days. Okay, giveaway time. So if you have, so uh, I'm doing a giveaway. Um, so there'll be eight local uh, giveaways for Mauritius, and there'll be two international ones. Uh, the two international ones would be uh, Oysetch Park gift cards, so that you can like make your own PCBs. And um, the local ones will be um, just electronic modules, stickers and stuff. So yeah, you can just go on this link or you can scan this QR code. Okay, thank you for listening. And also feel free to check out my blog, uh, technolaw.website. Right, Nathan, thank you very much. Uh, that was a nice presentation. Greatly done. You respected the time. It was uh, You covered a lot uh, in uh, such a short amount of time. And uh, Girish, uh, okay, Girish also joined us. So, Girish, uh, what? Was it all good? It was really nice. Uh, Nathan, tell me, do, would you like to reach out to our viewers uh, so that they can uh, get in touch with you on social networks, Facebook, Twitter, maybe? Um, yeah. And I also, in my previous slide, I actually had my e this is also my email. So if you have mm -hmm. any questions or if you want to like uh, ask questions about the session, you can like uh, just send me an email. So. All right, that's 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 great. Uh, once again, Nathan, I would like to thank you uh, for yes. your time and for your presentation. Nicely done.